What's cracking everybody? Zerfell Rose here, bringing you Pokemon Go Badly content yet again. This video is going to be going over the Kanto Cup in this ranked season 11. Now, we've had the Kanto Cup many times before, so you kind of understand just from repetition what's going to happen in this meta. You're going to see Nidoqueen, Hypno, Lickitung, Chansey, and let it, 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 it's just a mess. So uh, we're going to break down this meta here, going to kind of go over some of these popular picks and how you can beat them, and some uh, potential cores as well, just like usual, and maybe some core breakers to some of the popular cores. Um, first up, I've kind of got the group of anti-fighters. So you've got things like Nidoqueen, Hypno is probably the two most common anti-fighters you're going to see this whole meta. And then um, Alolan Marowak, recently gaining a shadow form, is probably going to show up pretty big, especially if it gets a frustration event in the next two days, which is not going to happen. So regular Alolan Marowak are the few lucky people that have the shadow will be here. You can expect to see it because it's very good in this cup. Shadow Victory Bell. Also going to be good in this cup. Um, it's good in it's, it's good in general. It obliterates things that don't resist it. The two charmers, speaking of things that Victory Bell obliterates, um, are going to be Wigglytuff and Clefable. And then you've got a Lone Nine Tails that can either be a charmer or a Powder Snow user, depending on the flavor of the day. And then Pidgeot is going to be one of probably the hardest hitting anti flyers in that it's or anti fighters in that it's got Gust. And then you can just mind game your opponent with. Feather Dance and Gust. So, you know, you can see here, you know, Lickitung is probably going to be one of the most, uh, you know, highly impactful things in the meta, just like in the Retro Cup right now. So gearing your team, <coughs> excuse me, with things that can beat it, like the normal type Pidgeot, or things that can drop the defense like Nidoqueen um, are going to be very important to being able to beat things like Nidoqueen or not being able to beat things like Lickitung and Chansey. Uh, so gonna not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these first like three slides because they're all stuff everybody you guys all know these things if you want to go check out the wins and losses and the matchups you can go hit up EV poke and go check that out yourself as well um none of that is really news to anybody because these things have been around for a while shadow low and marowak is really you know going to be the only thing that i would really look to go over here because of how strong it is. Yes, it loses to Lickitung, uh, but it beats Machamp, Hypno, Nidoqueen, Wigglytuff, all, all the char Charmers, Fairies, Ice. Um, it almost wins against Lapras. I think Lapras probably just gets there with a Surf at the very end or is able to do a Ice Shard right before Marowak gets to the uh, finishing move. But, um, you know, the Lick users, the Snorlax, uh, Alolan Muck has been a very dominant counter to Alolan Marowak for a while. Um, Dugong, because of its bulk and the Icy Wind spam, is also going to be something that can take care of it. Because it's got that Shadow Boost, it does take 20% more damage as well as giving out 20% more damage. So that's going to be something that actually um, can flip matchups one way or the other. Obviously, you know, you win more, you lose more kind of thing. So that's a little of Marowak. But everything else, you guys kind of already know. It's already been here in the meta. You've already seen it. So we'll check out the next page, which is the normal type pink blobs the ice types and the uh, snorlax so we've got lickitung and chansey um, we all know chansey is a abysmal horrible thing that you should never run and if you do i hope you lose every game that you've ever played in this kanto cup and lickitung is slightly more basic meta but i mean we don't hate it as much because it's not chancy uh but lapras and alolan sand slash alolan sand shrew technically should be on this too um i put it kind of in the in the other section with the core breakers but um it also kind of deserves a spot here but sand slash getting that um that shadow claw fast move during community day makes it a very solid pick in this cup now and especially when dealing with things like Lapras and Dugong and even Hypno, um, it makes it a very solid counter to a lot of things. And obviously with the ghost damage, it doesn't do as well against things like Lickitung or Chansey, but still has the steel typing that allows it to do well. So Snorlax is one of those um, go-to kind of safe swappy kind of things in this meta as well. Just like Lickitung, you could run a double Lick backline if you wanted to. Um, but they both fill basically the same role. It just kind of depends on the coverage. Snorlax having superpower as a coverage move makes it very strong against other things on this page specifically, um, but also gives it that threat of getting shields too. So it's also got um, everything on this page except for Lickitung and Chansey and Dugong. So really Lapras, Sand Shrew, Sand Slash, and Snorlax all have shadow forms as well. So something to keep in mind. And this third section is going to be the, literally like the three fighters in this meta, right? Because nothing is really in this meta that's a fighting type that is aside from these three. Yes, uh, Hitmonchan is in here. I probably should have added it, but um, 
doesn't get enough respect honestly hitmonchan has got uh it's got a shadow form it's got all the punches and it's got i think it's got close combat it's got power up punch it's got a lot of like really good fighting moves and coverage moves um but machamp primate and polyrath probably the three you'll see most often especially machamp and um and primate you know those are going to get the uh, primate recently getting cross chop as a move uh, during that go battle day which nobody's probably going to use because ice Ch ice punch and night slash are better moves for coverage but these are the things that loosed in hitno queen and hypno etc so a primate honestly being one of the safest things because it's got that night slash it's able to do uh super effective damage back to the hypno as well as the ice punch being able to hit back that nitto queen so uh primate honestly is like the safe swappy kind of fighting type that you're looking for if you're looking looking for an abv line for fighters but um you know primate you know you could also run it with close combat you could also run it with you know again if you wanted to the cross chop but honestly ice punch night slash and close combat are probably the three moves i would go with i'm not really worried about cross chop honestly uh, if you want cross chop play machamp that's that's really it cross chop and rock slide is going to be the move set here but you could go with payback if you wanted to um hit those hypnos for their whole hp bar and then polyrath is just it's a good core breaker of course very well with the uh the sand slash so let's take a look at core breakers speaking of core breakers and spice picks right so b drill alolan muck those are going to be like two very good kind of core breaker kind of pokemon to have um obviously you know it depends on what you're seeing in the meta but because b drill has poison damage bug damage and drill run it is going to give it the ability to have a diverse effect on some of the meta. So if you're seeing, you know, a lot of charmers or you're seeing even those alone Marowax, you can hit those back with those, <coughs> excuse me, super effective drill runs. And, you know, the poison types also going to take damage from those drill runs. Like everything on this page here has something to worry about when it comes to Beedrill and Muck. Now, Muck having Snarl or Poison Jab is its fast move. And then you've got... Um, your choice of Dark Pulse, Acid Spray, or Sludge Bomb, depending on your move set. That's going to be a very good safe swap because Dark is very, very few and far between in this meta, and it's actually pretty solid as a type because there's not a whole lot of things that are Dark types that just get destroyed by anything here that counters it. Like Fairy types, okay, Muck has Poison Jab, so you're going to have to really worry about that now. Um, the Alolan Rocks, you know, Golem recently got rollout for Community Day, and then we know Graveler is super solid having Volt Switch and then the Double Rock uh moves so those are going to do pretty well uh, obviously those have to worry about nitto queen but against a lot of other things they have a lot of play um dragonite is something that comes out to play once in a while especially as a shadow the dragon breath damage is just absolutely unreal from it and if you give it a shield and or um you know put it in a position where it's just not resisted you are in a good place with the dragonite mew obviously we know that's the jack of all trades kind of pokemon it can have literally any move set so mew set is you if you will and um it can cover a lot of the meta depending on the move set you give it like surf wild charge by itself deals with a ton of things in general and speaking of things that deal with a ton of things we've got golbat now golbat has a very diverse move uh move set and that it's got the ability to do wing attack poison fang and shadow ball so it's definitely an anti-fighter if i was going to class it as something but having shadow ball makes it able to nuke things that normally wouldn't get nuked by you know <laughs> gold bat with poison fang but having the ability to bait with poison fang and then hit that shadow ball is going to make matchups go so far in your favor that it's crazy now um this is assuming that you're able to land the Shadow Ball. So the fact that Golbat beats Hypno, that's all based on baits, right? Machamp is an obvious win. Marowak, based on bait. Uh, Wigglytuff, you go straight Poison Fang in that matchup. Nidal Queen, I think you would have to lose, or you'd have to land the Shadow Ball. So there is a lot of bait in play. So if you're okay with baiting and, and doing that kind of thing, then that's okay. Um, Golbat's not so bad then. Uh, Dragonair, as some of you have seen in this Retro Cup here that we're in currently as I'm recording this, uh, Dragonair has access to aqua tail and dragon breath and it's also got dragon pulse now the thing with that is aqua tail is a super super spammy move and then it takes 12 turns to get there for dragon breath so it's going to be able to put some shield pressure on things and farm them down as well and the last two things on this page i want to look at here are canto nine tails because nine tails is just so 
interesting when if you give it ember you can give it fire spin too but ember lets it hit things for so much more damage in a shorter amount of time and the only things you really have to worry about are you know water fighters and nitto queen and then obviously shadow snorlax i guess that's kind of an out bulky sort of thing but um you know nine tails is going to be able to hit things with overheat and just nuke their entire face off even if it's resisted if you've been playing with or have seen someone play with a nine tails in go battle league or even in the uh show six pick three tournaments that have been hosted by play pokemon uh shout outs to cindy by the way for running it and dominating with it a few weeks ago um you kind of know how potent it can be especially the shadow version um and then you've got the alone sand shrew which is the xl investment of this whole cup but not to be forgotten so you can run the shadow i'm not powering up a shadow right now that's way more resources than i could possibly think about having um but you've got powder snow nice slash blizzard so you got powder snow a bait move and blizzard which is the new move and that's going to be able to allow this thing to hit so many uh pieces of the meta and break it apart so having night slash dealing super effective damage to things like hypno and uh being able to just out bulk the um you know all one muck being able to out bulk the nine tails because of the resisted charm so it's basically an anti-charm it also is an anti-hypno and it's an anti nitto queen so like the the big three of the meta lickitung also has to deal with it because it only can do lick damage and i mean xl lick xl uh sanctuary is pretty bulky so a lot of the more prevalent things in the meta get beat by the sand true which is why it's such a popular pick if you can afford to build one and obviously the shadow is a new addition to the meta that's going to basically it gives you a win more lose harder situation so if you, the things that it beats it beats better the things that it loses to it loses to harder that's really that's really the essentially the uh results i get from looking at it here so last page is some spicy slash core breaky stuff we've got magneton super spammy has zap cannon has discharge thundershock you know you can i i got blasted a few seasons ago by a magneton running zap cannon it just took my whole health bar um, off, off. i was not expecting it it took my whole health bar um charizard you all know who charizard is what it does same with venusaur um you know these are going to be kind of picks that you just kind of use depending on the meta that you're seeing if it looks like you can use these things to do well you know maybe you're not seeing a whole lot of the things that hard counter them go for it uh, blastoise also deserves a place on this page as well uh, i just don't have the room for him unfortunately but uh the canto muck having the diverse move set of uh, thunder punch and dark pulse is worth a mention here and I'm sure by now everybody knows about the triple legacy seeking which is going to be able to handle things like the grass types it's also sort of like an anti-water um really depends on you know one thing what you're seeing but having the move set of icy wind and drill run as well as it able to hit so many things in the meta for super effective or neutral damage play the bait game it's very very popular to pick too um alone radicate is one that you now would probably be better off running the one with return for that ability to nuke things and not have to run hyper beam um but Alolan Raticate is a very solid core breaker. It's one of the only dark types in this cup, so that makes it very good as an anti-hypno, anti-Alolan Marowak sort of pick. And also, speaking of uh, psychics, uh, Alolan Raichu is in this cup. Now, it's probably not going to be as popular with the rise of Nidoqueen Queen and Lickitung, but it's definitely... Um, you know, it's, it's very, very nukey. It's got wild charge. It's got volt switch. It's got grass knot. It's even got psychic. So it's got a diverse move pool. It's just a matter of being able to get to those moves and land them. And speaking of nukes, we've got Kanto Sand Slash with Earthquake. And it's also got a recent community day move in Night Slash, which makes it very spammy. And if it has the ability to farm something down or get a boost, then it's, it's going to town and it's over. The, the, the nice, <laughs> the Sand Slash is going to destroy everybody at that point. Um, something I was running last season, having a lot of fun with Galarian Rapidash. As long as you can keep it away from Nidoqueen and Ghost types, it's actually really interesting. Uh, very spammy, having Psycho Cut, Body Slam, it has the ability to run Play Rough. I think it has Psychic as well. Uh, maybe a Fairy Move, Play uh, It says Play Rough, I just said Play Rough. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's a very good, it's a very interesting pick. And I mean, it's, I'm going to give it a try for sure, because it's a lot of fun. And then Aerodactyl, if you really want to be that person with the fast move teams, Rock Throw, Shadow Aerodactyl is, I guess, the pick for you. I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't like it. So we got some cores on this page here. So the first page or the first core that I want to look at is the Alolan Marowak Lapras core. Um, it does very well because the ice damage is able to deal with the grass types to a degree. Like it's a very good like safe swap for, for Alolan Marowak and 
Um, essentially, anything that was on that first or uh, that second page with like Lickitung and Dugong, Lapras, uh, all that stuff that is sort of weak to fighting cores pretty well with Alolan and Marowak because Alolan and Marowak dominates fighting types. So in kind, those two are going to pair very well together because fighting types are very prevalent in the meta, even though there's only a few. Um, and then you've also got to keep in mind too that uh, you know things that you know things that lose to uh, you just you just want to be able to core them together. F but fighting types is where this core centers around. You're seeing a lot of fighting types run this core. It's really good. I tried it a couple seasons ago and it was absolutely amazing. Um, and speaking of like fighter anti fighter cores, the Lickitung and Nidoqueen Queen core is another extremely solid one. You could probably throw anything on either side of that core. Like you know you want to throw a Hypno on the other side of it with the Lickitung in the lead, or if you want to throw you know Sand Slash, uh, Lone Sand Slash, or Lapras or something on the other side of it with the Nidoqueen Queen in the lead. Either way, you're going to be in good shape. Uh, the bottom core is going to be uh, Machamp and the Alolan Muck that allows the Machamp to beat through the things like the Sand Slashes that destroy the face off of the Muck. And then also the Muck is going to be able to deal with things like Ghosts and Psychics that deal uh, give uh, Machamp a really hard time. And then the last core, one of my actual personal favorites in this cup, is going to be Polyrath and the Sand Shrew, Sand Slash, Alolan uh, combo here. Now you could run this as literally this AVB team. Like the Polyrath covers the fires so hard and it also is able to deal with um some of the you know bulky ice types that give sand slash and sand shrew a little bit of trouble as far as like if you're running the powder snow version um shadow claw you're going to want to have a little bit more play against you know things like pidgeot but um that's a very solid core and i actually really enjoy it and then speaking of Pidgeot, in the middle we've got some very de facto safe swappy kind of Pokemon. So these are the things that can definitely have a high high chance of getting you switch advantage, shield advantage, or otherwise. You got Snorlax and Pidgeot are those two normal types that I was talking about that can really deal with things like Lickitung and other Lick users, Ghost types. So uh, those also have a lot of diverse play because of their move sets and their bulk. And then you've also got Hypno and Mew. So they've got both very diverse move sets. You know, you could run Hypno with or without the Shadow. You could run it with any variation of punches, Shadow Ball focus blast and the same thing with Mew. Both of them have a gigantic move pool that'll keep your opponent guessing and if you're running a less than normal move set you might be able to surprise your opponent and just completely blast their whole health bar like if you're running focus blast they may not expect it and you may be able to take them by surprise and get switch advantage or completely win a game just by using that so um that's essentially the Kanto Cup. Not a whole lot here it's literally numbers 1 through 151 um and I'm pretty sure that Mew is legal. If not, I could be wrong. The legendaries might not be allowed, but I'm pretty sure they are. If they're not, then ignore everything I've said about Mew. Um, you know, obviously you're not bringing Shadow on YouTube. I'm pretty sure the legendaries are allowed in this cup. But um, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. And if you guys want to get early access to these meta analysis or my teams for the Kanto Cup or any other cup in the future, uh, I've got a Patreon server that I've got. Uh, you guys go ahead and check out the description in the link in the or the link in the description of this video, as well as right here underneath me here in the uh, little, little boxes of uh, socials. There, I also offer coaching through Metify if that's something that interests you as well. And I am out. So thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.